Hey guys, it's Novell J. Lee, and welcome into a new Buzzcast here at Buzzworthy Radio. This is actually a new thing for me in a sense of what we are covering. And I say that because we've never done anything like this before on our show. And I am so honored that I get the chance to take part in this entire thing, or at least in part. We have gotten the chance to cover virtually the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. And we've already gotten the chance to screen some spectacular films that are going to debut next week. The festival begins on February 7th at the Arlington Theater. And one of the films that I got to review, my very first film review, by the way, was the film called Oki. It stars Kate Cobb, Kevin Bigley, and Scott Michael Foster. And we had the chance to speak with Kevin and Kate about the movie. And I'm so excited for them. I watched this and literally my reviews online and you can check it out for yourself. It premieres next week, February 10th. And there was just so much that I could say about this that I can't say until it premieres. But I really, really loved every aspect of this film and the themes that it incorporated into it that was incorporated into it i should say and here it is our chat with kate and kevin in reference to oki take a look uh kate cobb kevin bigley thank you so much for joining me really appreciate it thanks for having us we appreciate it man yes so let's talk about the film and i i know i i was watching i was like i'm so glad someone said it in the film because i was gonna pronounce it wrong <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say i kept saying in my head is it is it okay or is it okay, <laughs> it's okay. and i was like yes, i was right the first time <laughs> yeah. yeah got it right i oh, did get it okay. right <laughs> okay. it's okay it is Oki. So let, let, let's talk about how you guys came into development of doing of doing this project, who the ideas surrounding it, all, all of that stuff, because I love talking about that as far as the concept of of this film, how it came into about and how long have you guys worked on this and tried to make this happen? Yeah. Yeah, for us, you know, I mean, we have been together for 15 years, been married for 10. So we've been and we've been working together for as I mean, we met doing a play together or we have knew each other for a long time. But we like, you know, got together doing a play together. I mean, it was just like we've had a, a lot of experience working with one another. So we did a lot of sketch uh, for Funny or Die in, um, in the 2010s and. Then we just kind of got away from that with our respective careers, and we really wanted to come back uh, together to do to do something like this, you know, to do a, a full blown feature. So we started with a short that we self financed okay. and produced uh, in two in twenty twenty one, and that was shot in my hometown in Northern California, um, and it was very similar. We had a lot of the same actors, Scott. Yeah, Michael, same story. Yeah. Just mini concise oh, okay i got you and yeah we used that as a proof of concept to uh to go to chicago media angels the the uh production company that ended up uh helping finance the film and uh and yeah they they got the whole thing and you know, we were able to go so there. we grew it from a short to a feature kevin wrote both um they're kind of based uh roughly on his hometown um and uh yeah we just kind of we're able to grow the characters from that little short and uh, filled it out. Yeah. Yeah. Before we even get into the film, because I'm, I'm so <laughs> excited to talk about this. I, I, <laughs> you both are, for those of you who don't uh, know, I when I did watch this screener, I did a review on it, and it is posted on our website, so please check it out. I was very, not only excited to watch it, but I loved watching this film. What was your ex what was your reaction when you found out that it was accepted to pre to premiere at the Santa Barbara International Film Festival? Yeah, we were really excited. They contacted us really quickly after we submitted and it was So it was um, not even like a a long turnaround time. It was like instant basically. No, yeah, it was a really quick it, which is not normal the normal case because we waited for a lot of other things, but yeah. uh, it was really quick and they seemed uh, when they talked to us about it, they were like, we want to have the premiere. We understand this world. We're excited. We think our viewers would really resonate with it. And that 
that got me right there. <laughs> yeah, and there's a there's a bit of relief too when you land at a good festival like Santa Barbara where you're like, okay, this is this is a good place to premiere. This is they really understand it. Mm -hmm. They're also we excited. They're excited. We got some really great screening times on the tenth at eight o'clock, and which is Saturday. It's like it's really great because some of these other ones you can end up. You know, at you know, ten thirty a.m. on oh, Wednesday, yeah. thing. You makes know, makes it so harder for people to see. It was it. really great, and it just did. It's nice to follow the excitement in this career, no matter like no matter what area or aspect of it. When people are pumped about it, yeah. it's it's hard to get your film in anywhere. So yeah. when yeah. you get to choose where you want to go and what's the best fit, like that is the ultimate pleasure of yeah. getting to kind right. of like decide what's the best fit for it. So right. we we think Santa Barbara was great, and and now. All of our, I mean, our cast and crew and everybody from LA can just like easily get up there. Yeah. So it's going to be a big party. I was going to say, this is the perfect opportunity for everybody because now they'll just got to go to Santa Barbara and just, yeah. you know, there it is. I, I think. Yeah. That so is, it's going to be, amazing. it's going to be a fun couple of days. Yeah. I, that's going to be amazing. I, <laughs> I'm so excited for you guys. Um, And <laughs> starting out, we start out with the character of, I, I now call him Lucky Louie. Thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> Calling him Lucky Louie uh, in there, Scott uh, Scott Michael Foster, who plays that role, and, and just driving back. Basically, we can we can say this: he is driving back into his hometown because his father passed away. Um, so he he's back there. He meets up with Travis, who is played by Kevin in in the, in the film, and he also runs into Lainey, who is played by Kate in the film as well. And things things get interesting after that. Point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really gets interesting after that yeah. point. I, 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 and one of the things I did, I'm going to start with you, Kate, but I said it in the review for those who haven't checked out the, the piece yet. I loved your character simply for the fact that she is a strong, independent woman, but mm -hmm. she definitely is struggling. And I like the fact that you were playing it in such a way, especially opposite of Scott, where it's, it's like, I, I can do this on my own. I don't need you, but in reality, maybe I do. <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I think it's like one of the things that was really important to us when like you know writing these characters and then you know shooting this and directing this movie like you know it was important for us to like show real people and real people are neither heroes or villains real people right. are just imperfectly f functioning and imperfectly existing and um and I think that what's so interesting about Lainey is that she is completely self-sufficient in a lot of ways, but she's also emotionally, I think she is looking for support and emotionally she wants to be uh, taken care of in certain ways. Um, and she's hoping that she can meet someone that is eye to eye with her as far as yeah. that goes. I think that that's the part that makes Lainey um, super vulnerable and um and in some ways kind of heartbreaking to watch i think i think she also in that respect too with that description you just gave it also makes her relatable yeah because i feel like there are there are people out there and not just women but also guys too that also feel that way and mm -hmm. so i think that's another reason why maybe i was a little bit attached to her because i, I i'm watching and i'm going like i know I, I know people like this. I may have been that, like this yeah. at one point mm -hmm. in my time in my life. Mm -hmm. And just to see that being played out in that way, I think it really resonated. It, it's going to resonate with the audience. It really resonated with me. So I, I oh, definitely, I'm so glad. definitely want to put that out there. And That's same. That's great. And <laughs> for Travis, I I really did feel that as, as much, I will say this, because this also was put out there for you guys. Um, so... If you guys get to see this film, it basically will show, as my headline puts it, don't knock people on your way up. Like, really don't do that. Because yeah. I really thought that was the best message that I took away from this film because it is evident, especially in the beginning, how much that Lucky Louie did not want to really come back home. Like it mm -hmm. really sat with me going like it, it he acts like he's above them now. I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't like that about the character, but it obviously made for the film, but and that's a good thing. You're not supposed to, at least in my opinion, feel mm -hmm. some type of sympathy towards him at, at that point because he really he really and spoiler alert, he really did dog his he really did dog his hometown friends before he became a published author and writer. And became mm -hmm. popular and made money from it. And he he 
he embellished a lot in order to get to his to where he is at this point in time in his life and i think for me watching that i i just looked at that and i was going like wow that is literally the best thing i don't want to say that's something that resonates with me but unfortunately mm -hmm. it does because mm -hmm. that was another aspect of it i i look at myself especially with doing this kind of thing where it comes to podcasting comes to blogging and getting to go to events such as and, and covering events such like like this i'm not looking I'm not knocking anybody to get where I am. I'm I'm telling everybody, you're on this ride with me. I love you guys for being on this ride with me. You guys are still my people. And so watching that, I'm going, it could have went that other way. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad it didn't. But watching that, it just, it just completely, again, just 100% solidifies why you don't, you don't get rid of your own. And mm -hmm. I love the fact that with Travis as much as he's pissed at Louie, he still wants to find some way to make amends with the man. So I think that's really interesting of that character as well. And I, and that's why I said it, I really feel that we should have a friend like him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I feel like I, I think that there, when you grow up in a rural environment or working class, you can really start to feel overlooked in a lot of ways or that your future's kind of mapped out um and sometimes that can feel that can breed like an insignificance and i think that that's how you get a lot of people including myself and my wife as well with a chip on your shoulder that you want to show it, like i have this motivating factor or, or, or element in the back of my head that it's like i really want to show them i'm really going to show them that i can do this that i'm that i'm capable yeah and that I, this that and the other thing but i really don't know at the same time, I I know who them are, and I it, it is, and I, and I and at the same time, I don't. I have no idea. Like they're not. It's and I think a lot of that has to do with your hometown and the relationship that you have with it, and it can be, be like a defining quality of who you are, and you know uh, what you're going to end up doing. And I think that that's kind of really um, that's kind of the ghost that is haunting Louis you know i mean really is is this is this want and desire to be you know worth something and with travis travis yeah. he's made amends with where he's from he loves it and he has a relationship with it that um you know but he feels very close to it he doesn't have the same hang-ups he has, doesn't have the same demons because he's kind of ex he he loves his life i think i also think that one of the things that we talk about a lot when like making this film and talking about the themes of this film are is the is the concept of like what do we owe to our hometowns like what do we owe to a place that in some ways we feel like built us but in other ways we feel like has harmed us and who created you know uh, you know our, our insecurities or that um that uh we stole things from we mm -hmm, took things yeah. from you know and so i think it's one of those things that like louis for example he is a he's a guy who took things from his hometown and used them for his own benefit. And in that way, you can kind of, you know, you kind of can see where everyone is coming from. Louis wanted to escape his hometown. He wanted to make something of himself outside of what he felt the town would expected he would become. Yeah. But then, you know, on the other hand, he um, he did something that from the town's perspective is, um, is kind of an awful thing to do, you know, and kind yeah. of stole their identity and then bastardized it in a certain mm -hmm. way, you know? So yeah. I think. Um, yeah. He really wanted to be special. And, and mm -hmm. he thought that I think that that would fix a lot of things and it just didn't, you know, yeah. I, I, I think. Right. I, it never does. It never it. does. No. Yeah, it's not going to. Yeah. And I think honestly, the, the, a lot of the things like the, your perception of your past is just your perception alone. You know, mm -hmm. how he paints his father in these books to be kind of a, an evil man, I think, is another thing that's haunting him is he's we're seeing an unreliable narrator in a, a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. The way that we're with the window through the story for which we're we are watching it is is Louis's perception, you know, yeah. of these people and everything. So, yeah, we wanted to play with that a lot. Yeah. It, he definitely had to deal with the elephant in the room, or in this movie's case, a pig. But <laughs> uh, the pig. yeah, yeah, 
<laughs> but uh, he really did. And I, I think that was, and that was one of the things I did not want to put into the article, but there is a significant part of the film where it deals with that. And I really felt that was the most pivotal part of the movie. And it was done extremely well on all fronts with everybody involved. The acting in this scene is absolutely, I really felt something for everybody in mm -hmm. that scene alone. All of his friends, as well as Louis, surprisingly. But mm -hmm. it was it, it was just done in such a way where I think at that point, I kind of started feeling for Louis at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was hard to get to that level, especially because of things that he left behind and a certain aspect he left behind. It's another part of the film I'm not going to give away, but there was another part <laughs> where I just literally just sat back and I said, you are a shit. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll tell you this. No one can play a pretentious asshole like Scott Michael. Yeah, <laughs> he, 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 and he's the sweetest guy in the world. And he, he can is. kill it with that. He's so good. And yeah, it is hard. He's di it's difficult at times. I agree. I was there's like, that scene where he uh, his Tesla breaks down under mysterious circumstances and he's dealing with the mechanic. Yes. Scott just, I think, kills that scene. It was yeah. written to be kind of funny, but he makes it so much funny more funny. and cringy. Because he's and just cringy. locked on his phone talking to this guy <laughs> he grew up with. He just does, He's just so flippant, doesn't care. He's just a mechanic. Only yeah. cares about his car. It's just yep. like, it's, he you nails hate it. it. You hate it. You hate it. You hate him, but on the other hand, you then, throughout the film, it's just like, it's just like everybody that you know. It's just like every, like this, I, I think that's why, hopefully, this film does resonate with a lot of different types of people, because... I think that like there would be it would not be accurate if if he was just an asshole and it just stayed that way yeah, or that it, we yeah. never explored the reasons why he felt that way or the reasons why he did what he did or he became what he became. Um, and I think that that's like his origin story. You know, that's yeah. important stuff. And I hope that people can. I, what what I wanted at the end of this film, and I, I'm sure that he, you feel the same, same way writing it, but what I wanted as a filmmaker at the end of this movie was for people to feel completely torn about who who to be behind, about who yeah. to trust and who to feel bad for and who to feel mad at and who, you know, is, is to just feel kind of that that really human feeling of... Um, you know, of, of you're kind of brokenhearted, but you don't know why. And you don't, you know, there's no way to fix it, you know? I think that's a perfect description because that's kind of how I felt about it towards the end because you are, you are feeling sympathetic for certain people, but then you're also going, as you just said, but why? Why mm -hmm. am I feeling so torn about this person? And yeah. why am I feeling this way about this person? But I also looked at it in such a way as to piggyback into what you just said a few moments ago, that character development for Louis in the film, as you just said, if that wasn't incorporated in this, there's no way this film would have worked. Yeah. Right. And because of the fact that there was that, as you put it, origin story for him and that we were able to flesh him out a, a, a lot more within that time span of almost an hour and a half, mm -hmm. it really worked. And, and that's why I fell in love with the movie is because yeah. of the fact you were able to flesh him out. If you didn't flesh him out, especially as how pivotal and how mm -hmm. much of a focal point his character is in this, it probably would not have worked. So you convey that message very well. So I thank you for that. Um, Scott does such a killer job at that too. I think he has this subtle revulsion of, of the dirtiness of his surrounding as well as like, he grew up in it. Yeah, so pull then, yeah, so it. pull towards it and the desire to get a little dirty. And, you know, it's it's really fun to watch Scott kind of deal with, oscillate between the two. Yeah. Yeah. I believe this is your directorial debut. Is that right? It is. Yeah. It's my it's my feature directorial debut. Yeah. Oh, what was that like for you? Like, what was that? Going Terrifying. <laughs> oh, of course it was. <laughs> like, scary. Very scary. scary. Uh, it was, it was, it was, I, 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 I said on a daily basis while making this movie that I have never been more exhausted or more fulfilled in my entire life. I I think that the that um, the the doing of the job itself was so um, soulful for me, and and mm -hmm. it was um, I'm very type A, and I was very prepared, and all of that, and it it really was um, it was like a life changing experience. Truly, it was it was like a really it really crazy, exciting, complicated, intense fun 
uh, also heartbreaking um, experience. And so, yeah, I feel really, really grateful that that this was this got to be my first one. It was very clear cut. I think that even though it was the most work in our career that I think we've ever had to do, you didn't want to be anywhere else. Oh, I mean, yeah. It was the it was the I think a shared favorite of an experience. Never been happier getting the least amount of sleep. Of my yeah. Life. Was... <laughs> Just... yeah. That's a fair yeah. assessment. Well. <laughs> Yeah, and there were a lot of night shoots. Um, the last, the oh, last sure. yeah. third of the movie was all night shoots. Yeah. So it was like, that was, yeah, it was tough. It's tough to keep morale up. It's tough to right. keep your own body functioning. Right. I am not like a, I, I am not like a late sleeper. So it was hard for me to like sleep throughout the day and then get yeah. up at night. It was just like a hard transition. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the actual doing of the the film, the making of the film, we only, we shot this whole movie in 15 days. So I was getting we, ready to ask that. How long did it take? Yeah. Yeah. So we had two, basically on boots on the ground, we had two weeks of prep and then we had 15 days to shoot, mm -hmm. 15 work days to shoot the movie. Um, yeah. So that pe for people who have made films before, or it, th that's like not a lot of time. Yeah. Um, right. So, you know, uh, there was a lot of, um, really intense preparation and really intense, you know, on the, on the, the moments we weren't shooting, we were running around location sc scouting and trying to kind of like fit things together. And um, yeah, it was really difficult, but it was also like, I don't know, the funnest thing. Funnest, ever. the funnest, funnest, yeah. funnest thing. <laughs> blast. Just an blast. Absolute blast. And it was absolutely terrifying, but that we had a, just an amazing crew and, our cast and stuff and yeah. we were oh, all yeah. we, we shot in rural illinois uh and uh like surrounding area of dekalb and everything and so we had like a little we had like a, we were staying at this hotel yeah we took over a hotel like summer camp everyone yeah. was there yeah it was um maybe sometimes too much like sometimes summer. too much <laughs> but, um but it really was um it, it really was such a cool experience and i feel like we had a cast and crew of people who truly cared about this mm -hmm. film and about like their work that they were doing and um they brought their own artistic view to everything and i think in that way that's another reason that this film resonates i think with a lot of different people is because we had a million different perspectives that yeah. were all invited to bring their own unique view to the the film and so we got this really kind of cool mixture i think of a lot of different um a lot of different souls really yeah a chicago out. crew that's a working class crew doing a working class movie was really yeah i think it, yeah. it, it shines through yeah i love as i mentioned in in the the review is their chemistry the entire cast is just amazing it's just you worked so well and off of each other and i think that also is another really big selling point to the film is just the fact that your your camaraderie with with everybody is just off it's just it doesn't feel like you're acting it literally just felt like it was real life that's awesome yeah, I, I just like movies where you watch i mean and especially because most of our actors are are more known from tv um you can watch a movie like this i feel like and and just see them kind of for the first time where they feel more like actual people that they just hired like it, it you're kind of experiencing them as like the, the characters in purity you know, yeah. like Dan Johnson playing Steve is just such a, a fun, unique and weird performance that he just cracks. And he's on that show Pea Valley. Yeah. And plays yeah. like a totally different thing. Totally you know, so different thing. it's so fun. Yeah. Like, but the other the other part of it, too, like the secret behind the whole thing is a lot of us on the crew and ca like cast had been working together for years. Long before time. This. So, you know, Scott and Kevin had been on a film a couple of years ago together. That's how they met. And then Scott did the short proof of concept with us as well. So we already had him there. Our cinematographer, Wojciech Hilar, we've been working with for a decade. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Dan Johnson went to the same college as us. Mm -hmm. So did um, <laughs> uh, the guy who played JJ, Joseph Betta, the guy who played the cop. Yeah. He's the also cop, a yeah. friend of ours from college. Like yeah. we all, we called in all the people, we all of the big hitters right. that we know. That's and, how you do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we all do have chemistry outside of the film, mm -hmm. but I do think it helped us all also it helped us move quickly because we all have shorthands with each other. It was yeah, really easy yeah. to be able to just like communicate and be and get through things really quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you also can write toward them. You yeah. know, I know exactly the kind of character I feel like Joseph Bett as, as JJ is going to be able to play very well. You know, like he can play this, this kind of sad sack who's just, but also wants to be involved. You know, he, like he had yeah. this thing 
he has just this ability. I know everyone's kind of duality that they can mm -hmm. play, you know. And Joe also looks like an old movie star, you know, like yeah. he's leaning yeah. to Joe and he, he just has this like old movie and star look. But down. then he's also like the a little down. pathetic. You know, it's like both, you know, so he does both. Like And Dan can play this just, you know, tornado and Steve of like energy and everything. But the fact that he's being bubbly and has all this energy is because he's trying to like, it's like keeping a balloon in the air because if it falls, he's just going to get, he's going to deflate and get depressed. Yeah. And that happens when that, that moment when he's just yeah. with Dan has the ability of playing somebody who's like, seems very charismatic and, but, but then gets like very vulnerable. Has a lot of darkness. And, yeah. yeah. Who's trying to cover to that up yeah. with a lot of exactly. like energy and fun, yeah. you know? So yeah, he, he I thought. Yeah. I thought we got lucky. Was, yeah. We, uh, <laughs> everyone, uh, everyone who came to play was, was just great. Great. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I love that. And I have to ask because when the funny story is when he when Kevin reached out to me, he told me about he was on Animal Rescue with Joel McHale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But that wasn't my response to that. My response was, oh no, I know you from Sirens. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. <laughs> love Sirens. Oh man, that's great. Yeah. That yeah. was I'm, we did I'm, another we did another interview earlier and they also mentioned Sirens. Mentioned Sirens. Sirens just keep on going. I'm gonna I like I'm gonna text Bob Fisher right after this. The fact that this keeps getting brought up, like he he just felt we all felt like it was after two seasons of getting cut short. I felt like we should have done five or something. I mean, it was just like it it there was so much like legs to that. And he's stolen because he does animal control as well. He steals so much from Sirens to put in there. He will even say then admit <laughs> to it that he does. Because that was just the most fun, and we just had a really, a really great time doing that show. I'm just so happy that people still bring it up. It I fun. love it. I was like, <laughs> as soon as you said that was one of your favorite games, I was like, that was one of my favorite shows to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm so excited that he said that. Yeah. Um, and I love the fact that other people are talking about it. And as you said, I, I mean, that's like, 10 years ago. The fact that people are still it bringing it up. Seasons. Yeah, it, it's yeah. incredible. How many two season shows are still brought up yeah. 10 years later? I mean, that's Especially just like half an hour comedy, half hour comedies on, on USA Network. Like not a lot. The fact that it is is just a very special thing. So I, 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 I love it. I love that people still know me from that. That's that's amazing. I mean, the again, irony being my sister went into the medical field and became an EMT and now uh, an ER nurse after which <laughs> she, she has so many good stories. She'll tell me these stories. I'm like, that's a good episode for Sirens. That's a good episode. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. You know, we're in the era of the revival. So I'm kind you know, of, like, I know. In, I'm kind of in the, One can hope. I keep bugging Bob. Yeah, I know. Like, I don't know. Let me get on the horn with him. I'll be like, listen, he already yeah. had another conversation about sirens. I think we might have, to, <laughs> might have to do something here. Let's, let's be let's real. Oh, we all got together and had dinner actually last week. Uh, it's so funny that you bring it up. Yeah, because we, I saw Kevin Daniels. I saw Mike Mosley, Josh Segarra, who's on. Oh, my God. He's That's so funny. funny. He's on the other two. He's great. They've he's, all kept in touch so yeah. much after that, too. It's just yeah, like, he's yeah, big door pride. He's everyone, And I love sitting at a table like that and looking around at everybody and be like, everyone's working. Everyone's doing, you know, they've been so supportive of this film, so supportive of Kate so supportive of us and so it was just really cool to sit at the table and see that everyone's okay and doing well That's time to reboot it <laughs> right, we gotta reboot it i oh my god i really had to mention that before we wrapped up because that was that was just amazing just to Thank you. at least talk okay. about that at least a millisecond of my time that just made my heart swell but <laughs> that is great but i'm so glad that you got to speak with me today and talk about oki it was it was amazing i like I said, I can't say it enough. It was amazing. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I hope everybody who gets to go to the film festival that begins next week also gets the chance to experience it as well and enjoy it as much as I did. Us too. Oh, yeah. Us Maybe too. we, um, you know, hopefully with distribution and coming out hopefully this year or something, maybe we can uh, hook back up, talk about the movie as we're nearing the release. Think? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I mean, I will say, too, if that happens, just tell me where I need to be and I'll be there. <laughs> it's also a right. you know it thank you Kate, kevin thank you so much i really appreciate it thank you for having Absolute us pleasure. absolutely for our many thanks to kate cobb and kevin bigley for stopping by the buzzcast to chat about oki again the film premieres at the santa barbara international film festival next saturday february 10th it screens from as i said in, in the conversation two times that day so you'll have multiple chances to get the chance to see it 
I am really hoping you guys do get to check this out. It was absolutely fantastic. And many congratulations to them for getting the opportunity to premiere that at such a incredible festival. So many props to you guys. And thank you guys for joining us on the Buzzcast. If you missed any of our shows, any previous shows, or you want to get up to date on everything that we're talking about in film and television, visit our website. You can see it here on the bottom of your screen at buzzworthyradiocast.com. Our podcast is now on Amazon Music, so you guys get to check that out as well over there. You can stream it as many times as you like. And you can follow me on the socials. I'm on Facebook at Buzzworthy Radio. We just created a new Instagram for the podcast itself. So at Buzzworthy Radio, you can even follow me on my personal account at BuzzNav. We're also on X at Buzzworthy Radio. So plenty of opportunities to follow me, plenty of opportunities to get your information, and always keep getting the latest buzz with Buzzworthy Radio. I'm the Bell J. Lee, and I'll see you guys next time.